Hello everybody, I am your host Nuha Saad and this is a new episode of AUC Observer. Today's episode has many interesting reports from our university activities. Also wait for an interview with the AUC graduate student and the architect Karim Gabr. He caught the Egyptians' attention on social media with his recent design, the Dancing Lighthouse, at the landmark in the entrance of Borsak. The business world is rapidly changing and hence business schools need to remain up to date and equip their students with the necessary knowledge. Therefore, the School of Business at the American University in Cairo has conducted the fourth edition of its flagship event, the AUC Business Forum, from the 26th to the 28th of February. So, how can this forum help business schools to cope with the changes in the business environment? More in this report by Raida Hashish. Here, and over three days, the fourth edition of the AUC School of Business Forum took place to help business schools cope with the rapid changes in the business environment and keep business education up to date. This forum is so important for the new educational ways because now education is not more uh, one way, it's becoming more interaction, more of a panels, more of a sharing experience uh, rather than uh, theoretical cases. So actually a lot of good points were discussed in this forum. One of the main things that I would like to highlight now is trying to develop a responsible citizen, providing the necessary education and activities in order to introduce the responsible citizenship to individuals so that they would like to endorse this idea themselves. In addition to business and industry practitioners, academics from multiple universities around the world were present to share insights and discuss many issues like sustainable finance, family business resilience and more. Such insights can be incorporated into business education through various means to always be on top of what's happening in the world and try to bring the insights of it inside the classes. We need to make sure we're having benchmarking against what's happening in other international institutions, but also against what we have as our vision as an academic institution. The first thing is integrating sustainability in education in the curriculum, and uh, second of all, enhancing research in that area. Sometimes also in business school, you think, tend, tends to be very practical, uh, to related to businesses and firms, and I think that you have a time where you analyze um, to have more theoretical uh, thinking, I think it's important as well. The discussions were enriched by the attendance and questions of the observers, which made this forum a good opportunity not only to support business education, but also to enhance the unique status of the AUC School of Business among all other business schools. We see this as also showcasing our programs, our capacities, uh, to the world. Uh, one of our objectives is to always increase our global footprint. And through our discussions uh, with our guests that come and attend the uh, business forum, but also through the activities that actually result from our conversations, that actually establishes or helps to establish uh, partnerships with uh, not just academic institutions, but also professional institutions. Business schools do not only need to closely follow the changes in the business environment, but also have to incorporate those changes in their education. And that's what the AUC School of Business aims to achieve with this forum, which brings together from around the world academics, business professionals, as well as industry leaders. Reda Hashish, AUC TV, Cairo. Falaki Theatre continues to host cultural and artistic events. It recently hosted a dance theatre performance by Carola Cott. What is the hell I am doing here? More about the dance performance show with Hamza Awad in the following report. Al Falaki Theatre lately it hosted a dance theatre performance by director Carol Akkad. What the hell I'm doing here? <laughs> the 
the dance show moves between different emotions of human being. The idea of the, so, of the show is about the inner conflict that we have as human beings uh, between, I, I'd like to see us as different parts living in one body or in one mind. So for me, I'm Carol, but I'm also, I have a child inside me. I have Carol who has experience in life. I, has, I have Carol who is very emotional. I have like many Carols inside me. So the idea is how these different parts can manage to coexist together. Uh, sometimes they fight, sometimes they manage to negotiate and reach uh, some peace in some moments. The dance performance witnessed some dances in combination with traditional local and international music. All of them were in perfect harmony with the presented dances, which were well amused the audience. Hamza Awad, AUC TV, Cairo. Known as a fastest growing sport in the US, pickleball, a game resembling tennis, comes to AC for the first time. We know more about the tournament in the upcoming report by Ali Arobi. For the first time, AUC holds a mini pickleball tournament at the sports complex in Ar Rashidi Hall in collaboration with the Rush Academy, the home of spin-off sports specializing in non-string racket sports. Uh, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the States. Uh, it's a very easy game to play, the rackets are very light, the balls, it's a sort of a, a, a mixture or blend between ping pong uh, badminton and tennis and again it's for anyone and everyone it's a lot of fun it can be an easygoing game and it can be uh, a very competitive game if you choose to uh, so yeah we we thought that it's uh, time for AUC to introduce it uh, given the fact that it's booming in the States like crazy the AUC community was invited to participate in and discover this new, fun, social and friendly sport where rules are simple and easy for beginners. Initially the game started with more seniors, yeah, older, uh, plus 65, and now there's a lot of uh, uh, interest from professional NBA players like LeBron James. Pickleball has evolved from original handmade equipment and simple rules into a popular sport throughout the US and Canada. The sport is growing internationally as well with many European and Asian countries adding courts. I was actually playing ping pong and one of the coaches told me that there is a sport that you can play in badminton and basketball which is pickleball. Uh, وانا اكشلي مش كل الملاعب مش كل الـ 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 السبورتس اللي فيها راكت بحبها قوي 
يعني بجربت كذا سبورت ما عجبتنيش قوي بس بما انه اللي عجبني مثلا البادمنتون ودي يعني كلوز شويه للبادمنتون والبينج بونج حسيتها كده نفس الفكره شويه In pickleball, the same court is used for both singles and doubles play. The court is stripped similar to a tennis court with right and left service courts and the seven foot non volley zone in front of the net. This is Ali Arobi reporting to you, AUC TV, Cairo. To qualify its students to the job market and allow them to take the role of venture capitalists, AEC hosted Shrook Partners Venture Capital Case Competition. Abdullah Hussain gives us more details about the competition in the upcoming report. <laughs> The Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the AUC hosted Shrook Partners Venture Capital Case Competition, which is the first venture capital case competition in Egypt. It is a simulation of venture capital, VC, that allows a student to take the role of venture capitalist by investing $100,000 in real startups. It aims to give students a real-life experience to put themselves in the show of venture capitalists and evaluate startups. So, they can take decision whether they can invest in real startups or not. Actually, it's a, a case that the students are trying to put themselves uh, in the shoe of Shuru, evaluating uh, a certain startup, it's Khazili in this uh, round. Uh, and they assess, assess it uh, according to a certain rubric that we jointly set with the Shuru Partners as a center of, for entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, welcome to Shuru Venture Capital Case Competition Closing Ceremony. As it is a pilot round, the competition was opened only for AUC students from different majors. The project was very interesting because it falls in the scope of our major, finance, we're all a finance major. Uh, however, we don't have a venture capital uh, course, so it was a very good learning experience from an academic point of view because they gave us some tra training days and also from a pra practical point of view since they also give us uh, the practical uh, edge. Since it is mainly finance competition, it was expected to only attract business and finance students. However, the competition received multidisciplinary teams from different majors. 27 teams of three to five members participated in the competition with one finance student in the team. The best eight memos were selected for the final stage of the competition. Top teams received a total of $4,000. It was unexpected to receive the first place and we were so happy, uh, we were, everyone didn't believe it. So that it, it's really a memorable time, I don't think we're ever going to forget. The first place winning team received $2,000, the second place received $1,500, and the third place received $500. The American University in Cairo hosted the first venture capital case competition in Egypt for AUC students to give them a real experience about VC industry. This is Abdullah Hussein, AUC TV, Cairo. For the first time, AEC Robotics Club team won the first place nationally in the international scientific competition, RoboCup. What is the story behind the report of the competition and more about AEC Robotics Club in the following report? A beehive, that is the suitable word to describe the environment at the AEC Robotics Club's workshop. Therefore, no wonder to have this result. <laughs> RoboCup is an international scientific initiative with the goal to advance the state of the art of intelligent robots. The main competition is RoboCup competition. Uh, it has many divisions under it. Um, the division that we, um, that we entered was uh, RoboCup at Home Education which is um, making service robots to, to help in day-to-day -day tasks in every household. The first one was 
named carrying my luggage. Uh, in this part, we made the road uh, go to a certain bag that we pointed at and carried and follow the person to somewhere and then leave the bag uh, at this place. So by this uh, task, we were helping someone carry, carry his luggage, which is from the name. The second one was find my mates, uh, which is basically a receptionist for home. Uh, so if any guest comes to, to, to the house, uh, the robot will go and ask about his name and get his physical attributes and go back to the, to the homeowner uh, and tell him about that guest. First, the team received a training by a Japanese professor on programming the robot to follow a person and arm manipulation. We spent uh, six days in the workshop uh, learning about the software that we used in programming the robot. Then we, we spent one day in the preparation for the competition, then three days in the competition itself. AC Robotics Club has been established in 2008 for spreading robotics knowledge among the AUC community. We work on main three things. Uh, we uh, uh, offer technical uh, trainings. We teach people about robotics starting from level one, which anyone can join, whether from a science or a non-science background, to learn how to build a simple robot, and then more specialized fields, things in software, things in electrical, things in mechanical. Uh, the second thing we do is that we participate in competitions. Every time we see interesting competitions that could be beneficial for students, we form teams in order to participate in it uh, in the name of the university. And the third thing is events. We do events that promote uh, awareness about robotics and they get uh, professionals from the field to tell us more about the industry of robotics in case anyone wants to pursue that field. The club activities have created a large community of robotics geeks inside the larger community of AUC and that help us communicate the message of promoting interest toward this artificial intelligence. Noha Saad, AUC TV, Cairo. The electric mobility market size is increasing enormously, from cars to buses to scooters and more. The School of Science and Engineering hosted on February 26 an e-mobility expo at AUC in cooperation with Electrified Company. More in the following report by Reem Khattab. AUC hosted the first e-mobility expo in New Cairo campus. It's an expo that brought together researchers, students, and investors to explore the electric mobility market. The Arab is very good for the electric mobility so there is no running يعني ما فيش موفرة جدا لجيب المصري اللي هو الدخل الشهري يعني انا بتكلم مثلا لو عربيه في السنه بتمشي 50000 كيلو فاستهلاك البنزين مثلا حسبتي على اسعار البنزين اليوميه مثلا اللي هو السعر لتر البنزين تقريبا 10 جنيه او الكلام ده كله هتلاقي العربيه ممكن توفر لك في السنه الواحده من 200 ل 300000 جنيه رقم غريب مع الصيانات مع الزيت مع الكلام ده كله The AC Plaza was occupied by electric vehicles all the day the vehicles were cars, motorcycles, golf cars, tuk-tuks, and service buses. The event focused on vehicles that are fully electric or hybrid. The aim of this event is to raise awareness towards electric vehicles for a better future. The event was open to outcomers in which many students from other engineering schools attended. There were trips from Beni Swaif and Zuwail universities. I was very interested in hearing the talks of the CEOs of Infinity and Electrified, because I was very interested in the mechanism of electric cars, and I wanted to know them a lot, so I wanted to start with them after that. A lot of people questioned the availability of the charging station and method of charging the battery. That's why companies that offer charging stations were there, like Valio and Infinity. Uh, with the AC charger, this is an AC charger, this is the standard type of charger. Uh, it takes uh, from 6 hours to 8 hours, okay? Uh, the first charger is called the DC. The DC takes from, uh, from 0% to 100% just one hour. 
The day ended by a session that was given in the Basili Auditorium by the guest speaker Mohammed Ismail Mansour, the CEO of Infinity Group, in which he discussed the future of the electric vehicles in Egypt and the world. This is Reem Khattab, AUC TV, Cairo. The expatriate life that students face is harsh, but despite this, they chase their dreams and are able to become pioneers in their field, like Shaima Hekel has been doing. More about her story by Marina Salema. From Horgada to Cairo, Shaima Hekel started her journey to be the only Egyptian awarded a fellowship from EBFL, a 100 PhDs in Africa program and was chosen amongst 10 students in the first cohort of initiative. Regarding my fellowship, so it all started um, uh, from my master's because as I told you, I started my master's in, in biotech and immediately after it, I, I started my master's in public administration. And I uh, decided to do, my, uh, to, to, to do my thesis on creating a model for a disease registry, which is a database basically uh, for uh, dementia patients in Egypt because we don't have any sort of uh, databases in, for, for, for patients in Egypt and that's, that makes the research in the field very difficult. Uh, I worked on it and I did it and, and then we came across uh, the call for uh, uh, the PhD fellowship. It was provided by uh, EXAF which is a center for excellence in Africa. It's a center uh, in EPFL the, uh, in Switzerland, and they wanted to, to cover 100 PhD students in Africa who are affiliated to Africa and doing their PhDs in Africa, and they will support them with the fund and with the technical expertise from the professors in EPFL. It's a difficult path as she decides to go in with the help of her family while she's living alone. So about moving from Hergada to Cairo, uh, it was very tough in the beginning, especially on my family, because I am the only girl among my siblings. And um, you know, my mother is very emotional and she, was, she, she, didn't, she didn't want me to leave in the beginning. She was asking me a lot to, to, to go back. But, uh, but yeah, now after she, um, not only my mother, after both of them, after my parents are now seeing the impact of it and how, how many achievements I have done. Uh, they are now um, convinced that I should continue my path and uh, until I, I reach what, uh, what I want. It wasn't that easy to, to, to live alone in Cairo here, even with my brother, like leaving your family, leaving your memories in, in, your, in your home city, uh, your childhood memories and everything. So yes, I feel homesickness. And um, for me, I would love to go back to Hergada. But now I believe that at, at some point you will have um, to chase your dreams, to, to chase the opportunities that, that are available for you and um, start working on your future, building your care career um, and doing something for yourself. And then whenever the opportunity will come to me to go back to Hergada and, uh, and being able uh, to, to give back to my community there, I, I would definitely do that. Expatriate life is very harsh when you are alone facing all difficulties you have. But when you own a vision, God rewards you with a massive success. This is Marina Salema, EUC TV. The sports complex is always keen on providing the students with different sports experiences. The EC Athletics organized a dodgeball tournament supported by the Egyptian Dodgeball Federation. More in the upcoming report by Nariman Khalid. Supported by the Egyptian Dodgeball Federation, ESC Athletics invited the ESC community to play dodgeball at a Rashidi Hall in the sports complex. 
the dodgeball representatives began explaining the rules of the game and dividing the students into two teams, each team consisting of six players. Dodgeball is a team sport in which players on two teams try to throw balls and hit opponents while avoiding being hit themselves. The objective of each team is to eliminate all members of the opposing team by hitting them with thrown balls, catching a ball thrown by an opponent, or inducing an opponent to commit a violation, such as stepping outside the court. When a ball is thrown at a team and one of the players catches it, an eliminated player is allowed to return to the game. <laughs> سبورتس اكتيفيتيز يعني كانت حاجه من الحاجات الرئيسيه اللي حبيتها في الجامعه يعني سبورتس كومبلكس والفرايتيز من الالعاب كذا لعبه كذا سبورت والاوبورتيونيتيز والحاجات دي كده في الالعاب يعني هنا كتير بيشرح لي اللعبه كان بيقول لي مش عايز كره خطوه بقول له اه يعني زي صيادين السمك كنا بنلعبها في اسكندريه زمان قال لي لا لا مش كده انسى كل اللي انت تعرفه عن صيادين السمك وعلمنا حاجه جديده يعني احنا بدانا اول كاس عالم في 2016 رحنا انجلترا و... وخدنا مركز ثامن وبعدين رجعنا مصر عملنا دوري وبعد كده عملنا بطوله افريقيا وكسبناها وبعدين رحنا امريكا في امريكا انا كنت ممرن المنتخب الاول وخدنا المركز الخامس ورجعنا عملنا دوري ثاني الدوري كان قوي جدا وبعدين عملنا بطوله افريقيا ثاني وكسبنا واخر حاجه كانت عندنا كاس عالم في شهر 12 في استاد القاهره Dodgeball in Egypt started meeting international standards in 2016, but before that, it used to be played the Egyptian way. إحنا ساعة لما كنا في 2016 إحنا لما كنا لسه داخلين كأس العالم invitational letter يعني كان كان invitation أصلاً كان عندنا كور رابر كده حجمها قد وش البني آدم تقريباً بس اللي هي إيه بتلسع بالذات في وقت الشتاء كان الموضوع بيبقى كارثي فلما رحنا هناك اكتشفنا إن إحنا أصلاً بنلعب بكور غلط. فابتدينا نلعب بالكور المظبوطه بتاعه اللعبه دي اللي بتبقى هي قماش فوق قماش كل الليفلز اللي فيها طبقات قماش فهي الموضوع ما بيبقاش موجع للدرجه The sports complex plays an important role in the students lives as it's eager to introduce students to different sports taking into consideration that sports boost alertness discipline team spirit mental ability confidence and concentration of a student Nariman Khalid EUC TV Inspired by the historic Bursaid Lighthouse, the AUC graduate student Karim Gobr designed the brand new El Tamir Square at the entrance of Bursaid with a wonderful landmark which reflects the coastal city's soul and history. AUC observer interviewed Gobr to talk about his distinguished design which added charm to the city. Stay tuned for the interview up next. For days, Egyptian didn't stop sharing his unique designs on social media for the landmark in the entrance of Bursaid. It's our pleasure to have the architect and the graduate student, Karim Gop, to talk more about his recent achievement. Hi, Karim. Uh, welcome to EC Observer. And let us talk more about your uh, uh, recent design in the entrance of Bursaid. Uh, how, did, uh, how did it start? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation. Um, and um, actually it, uh, it all started like 10, 10 years ago when uh, I became uh, passionate about uh, architecture uh, and I wanted to, to make uh, something uh, that helps uh, my community um, and uh, I was raised in Port Said and uh, I, um, I learned a lot of, uh, of the st stories and songs of Port Said uh, and uh, I wanted to, to express this through, through my designs in the future. And uh, I thought that uh, this opportunity will be uh, a, great, uh, a great thing to, 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 ex to express this. Uh, and I will work it uh, through um, uh, the general consultant of the project, um, the International Center of engineering, of engineering Consultations. They choose you for this um, uh, Yes, I applied the, 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 the design through them and then we uh, we started to continue the the the, uh, the rest uh, the rest uh, phases of uh, the project. As we will see in the screen, some photos for the design. Do you do you, could you elaborate more uh, the the landmark? 
Um, actually, the the project uh, is uh, is in uh, the project location is in the in the, the new entrance of uh, of Port Said, uh, and this uh, entrance comes from uh, the axis of 30 June, uh, which is a, a new road as well. Um, and the, the the wall area is um, uh, there is like a development for the wall area to be a residential commercial zone. Um, so the, the the challenge was to. Uh, to design something that will welcome the, uh, the visitors that uh, are coming from uh, uh, from uh, other uh, other places. Um, you inspired actually the landmark from the historic lighthouse. Yes, from and sides. and and I chose the lighthouse uh, because uh, first of all it, uh, it's uh, it's so um, it's so important because it is uh, the first uh, concrete lighthouse in the world, and um, and uh, it it once used in the past to welcome the, vis the visitors that are coming from uh, the sea. So I wanted to use it to welcome the visitors that are coming from other places in, in Egypt or, or from other, uh, other places in the world. Um, and, um, and I wanted the vertical, uh, the vertical uh, shape of, uh, of the lighthouse and the lighting to, to be like uh, welcoming the, the visitors and to, to say that uh, there is, you reach it, the city of Bursaid. That's why I chose the lighthouse in the first place. Um, there are many symbols actually, actually in this uh, landmark, uh, the dancing uh, lighthouse and the waves yes. that you could you uh, could you uh, elaborate more these uh, symbols? Okay, um, the design itself it, uh, it divides into three main chapters. Uh, the first chapter is the dancing lighthouse, and uh, um, that where that is uh, the, the the part where the I I. Um, I, um, I got inspired by the, the, the ancient lighthouse. So I built a 3D mold modeling for the, the old lighthouse and started to uh, deconstruct, um, deconstruct the, 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 the main building uh, inspired by, by uh, the motion of the sea. Um, and I say the motion of the sea because um, the sea like affects, um, affects us in Portside a lot. Um, the motion, we have a motion of the waves itself uh, we have the motion of uh, the fishermen who react with the sea. We have uh, the motion of uh, of the wind, and this affects the, the, the people themselves. You can say you can see that uh, the people of Port Said sometimes they are rough, they are moody, and um, this is because of the sea. Uh, so I wanted to 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 use this element uh, on the the, the lighthouse uh, to produce a new element that uh, that represents. The current, uh, the current generation. Um, so I can say that I have an old uh, generation item and the new school that is uh, applied on it. This is uh, the shell or uh, the, the lighthouse part or the dancing lighthouse part. The second chapter is uh, the, the twisted core. And I wanted to present uh, um, the history timeline of Port Said in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, part because Many believe that uh, Bursaid is a new city, which is not correct. Um, Bursaid is the, the ancient city which was called uh, Bluzum, and um, and it was a rich city in uh, in the ancient Egypt era. Um, in a certain time, it was destroyed uh, to uh, avoid the attacks on Egypt from the east. Uh, so I want <coughs> I wanted to to represent this uh, this timeline. So I started the core with. Um, with uh, so simple boxes that are going up straight, um, and uh, in a certain time it twists, and it twists to represent the time when uh, when uh, the the city was destroyed, and after that it uh, it um, it goes straight again, which represents the the time when uh, the the city was rebuilt in uh, 1859, I I think, and um, or 58, I don't <laughs> I don't really remember. Uh, and um, and from this time, the city is uh, is going up and uh, and uh, trying to uh, to enhance its its future. Um, so I can say that um, uh, that this uh, this core is uh, represents the, the the history timeline, and I wanted to end uh, this core with uh, four watches uh, to represent time, which is uh, the main witness on this story or. Uh, for this uh, history, uh, and um, at the very end of this uh, of this uh, element, I um, 
I used uh, um, a sky spotlight uh, to represent hope that the city have uh, to uh, build uh, its own future. That is like uh, the main concept of, uh, of the project or uh, the design. But did you expect actually all these wonderful reactions after you designed um, this uh, landmark? Okay, I, I, I just want to, <laughs> to say I, I did not finish the, the first part. All is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh. Uh, the, last, the, last, uh, the last chapter I want to, to, to say, like to tell, me, to, to tell you about the last uh, chapter first, uh, and uh, it was land, and I wanted here to represent the land of uh, Port Said in the open space. Uh, so I made like uh, 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 cylinders, uh, which are uh, the land of the or, or, or the base of the landmark, uh, and they are uh, divided by uh, three main fountains, um, which uh, stands for uh, the, the three main uh, water features that. Uh, uh, that uh, the Port Said have, which are uh, the Mediterranean Sea, uh, the, the Lake of Manzala, and uh, the Suez Canal. Of course, yes. Um, as for your second question, uh, actually, I, I, when I posted this uh, this project on social media, I uh, I was posting it uh, as a kind of uh, documentation. I did <laughs> not uh, believe, uh, I did not think that uh, uh, that the people will react on it uh, or or say anything. And I was surprised that the next day when I woke up and found that it went viral and what was, do was going on. <laughs> um, but uh, <coughs> the, the real or uh, the, the, the real good feedbacks uh, I got from uh, the site itself. When, uh, when you go on the site in Bor Said, uh, you will find the best feedbacks. Um, I can tell you that once I was, uh, I was walking by the, the, the square, and uh, I found uh, a, a, a worker that uh, finished uh, his work, and uh, he <coughs> he go up on the square and uh, lied on uh, one of its uh, of its chairs. And uh, I like this very much because he had a very long day in work, and then he came here to take his breath. Um, another story was uh, when uh, I was taking the photos uh, of the project. Uh, and there uh, was uh, a, a grandfather with his uh, grandchildren, and he stopped by uh, the square and uh, took his uh, his uh, his, children, his grandchildren to the square and started to take photos for them. Um, or, 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 or I can tell you when, and this was last time I was there, um, a, a young lady and his daughter was sitting by uh, the, on the side of the fountain, and they were putting their legs in the water. And um, this, uh, this, uh, this is what I like about uh, the open spaces or designing an open spaces because the main aim of, uh, of designing them are uh, to react uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the people and to, to be uh, a century for the people uh, to take their place or to seek peace. Actually, that's, that's wonderful. Thank I uh, you. assume that you, you are proud of yourself after you saw the, all of these uh, scenes. <laughs> but actually, of course, there are many challenges that you faced in, in designing this, uh, yeah. this lab work. Um, actually, this, uh, there were like, uh, a lot of challenges, but uh, the, the, main, the main challenge and what I was really afraid of uh, uh, was the construction of the, of the project. Uh, because it's a new school and um, a new type of things uh, of, uh, of constructions that we can uh, do in Egypt. Um, um, however, the, the, the people or the engineers uh, who worked on the construction were, were uh, very uh, uh, were very active, and they wanted to produce something that they would be proud of. Uh, and actually, uh, every time I thank them of uh, of, uh, of their efforts because. Um, they risked uh, themselves uh, to, to, to build this. Not only engineers, but also the, the workers. Um, they were working in the winter, in the rain, and on this level of height uh, to produce this, uh, this, uh, this kind of, this quality of project. And they worked unabatedly to, 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 to put it in a very good quality. I always say thank you to them because Without them, uh, this uh, project, um, we, we would never see this project in the, on the site. Uh, actually, <coughs> uh, all of us has um, an idol or a role model uh, yeah. that inspire him a lot. Um, who is your favorite uh, architect that you, 
maybe you want to be uh, like him in the future? Um, I, I, I believe that, uh, or I consider myself that I'm a result of, uh, of uh, many schools um, complied with, uh, with themselves. Uh, like I, I like many, architect uh, many architects, um, we can say that I like the Hadid with uh, its uh, forms and organic shapes. Uh, I like uh, the I like uh, Saint Hugh Calitraba with his ideas in representing the human body in uh, in uh, in uh, in constructions and buildings. Um, I like um, Frank Jerry and how he expresses the fluidity of uh, of the, of the of the items in his architecture. Um, and um, and also I like Daniel Lebeskind and I like. Uh, I, 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 I share his ideas about uh, about architecture. Uh, that um, he once uh, he once said that architecture is a storytelling profession, uh, and that's what I believe. Is architecture is a storytelling profession, and it should have emotions because a story without emotions is, is just a report. Um, but the one that I really like, and not because of his work only, but uh, but also because. Uh, he did something great. Is uh, Bjarkel Angels? Um, Bjarkel is a, is, a, is a Danish architect, and uh, in Denmark they have traditional architecture like we have in Egypt. Uh, and what he did is that he he brought the traditional architecture and brought the new ideas and the new um, features of uh, of the current architecture and um, represented a new architecture that the people of Denmark uh, accepted because it, uh, it, uh, it, it connected with them, uh, because it, it came from their traditions, and uh, it represents new things. So um, I believe that, uh, that uh, Bjarkel is like a role model in this, in this idea, but in architecture or designing, I think that um, I like a lot of schools and a, lo and a lot of, uh, of ways to design. Is there any project, any major project that you prepare to work on it in the future? Uh, actually, after uh, after I finished uh, constructing this uh, project, uh, I started to look forward to design something to Egypt, uh, and um, I want to, to 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 make something that uh, that my community can benefit from and uh, that represents uh, us as a, as a uh, current civilization. Because like after 200 or or 300 years, um, people would come and uh, and look uh, for the architecture of the current time. And I want them that um, they will find a civilization that is uh, uh, that is great, like uh, the, the Arabic and the Islamic uh, civilization or the or the Peronic uh, civilization. Each uh, each one of these civilization had some features that uh, that uh, uh, that they have in their buildings, um, and um, and they can make their own ideas. And do their own beliefs, but on the uh, the main things that we have in Egypt. From your point of view, what uh, the Egyptian architecture miss to go global and to be known uh, in the world? Actually, I believe that uh, Egyptian architecture need to be uh, more Egyptian, uh, but it needs also to be more creative and more uh, representing the, the current generation. Um, like I, I can say that. When Noha says to be with her uh, grandmother, uh, I can say that they are, they are similar in some features. They have the same, uh, the same uh, skin color. Uh, they may have the same uh, shape uh, of uh, body and face, uh, but they have some differences. Uh, they will have um, uh, differences in, in haircuts, in uh, the clothes or the outfits itself. And um, this is what we need to do in, uh, in, uh, in our architecture. Uh, we need to, to, to make it like new and trendy and, uh, and uh, representing um, our, uh, our generation, but uh, it also comes from uh, the, the ancient or the old uh, Egyptian architecture. So we can say that uh, the buildings we have in our time, they are the grandchildren of the, the buildings we had in Egypt from uh, hundreds of years or maybe thousands of years. Uh, thank you, Karim. It's uh, our pleasure uh, interviewing you today and wish you a brighter future. Thank you, Noah. The pleasure is mine. This is the end of our episode today. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next week.